You're tuned in to The Keetra Show and listening to SOB, Style of Business. The podcast with your host, Keetra. We aim to highlight the ongoing trek of entrepreneurs and business owners from around the globe, featuring stories that recount their struggles, experiences, and inevitable road to success and self-fulfillment. Welcome to SOB. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for another hot episode, wonderful, fantastic, beautiful, whatever you want to call it, on this wonderful Wednesday is the day uh, that we are recording this, but thanks so much for tuning in for another episode of SOB Style of Business. I'm your host, Keetra, and today's guest is Madeline Lambert. Just so happy to have her on. She's an entrepreneur and the founder of Content Refined. We're going to be chatting today with her about her experience in the entrepreneurial space and I cannot wait to hear all that she has to share with us. So, Madeline, how's it going today? Can you please give us an introduction, and we will move forward from there. How's your day going? Hi, it's going great. How's yours going? It is going well. Going well. Thanks so much for asking, and I will let you give us an introduction, and if you want to just give us some information about your background and uh, industry experience, we will start there. Yeah, sounds great. So, uh, my name is Madeline Lambert. I'm the CEO and founder of Content Refined, uh, which is a content marketing agency. And we're located up uh, up in Canada, actually, in a little town named Collingwood, Ontario. And what we essentially do is all of your content marketing for you. So, if you have a business or a website and you need content for your website, then we will uh, you'll commission us to do that, and we'll take care of. Everything from keyword research to content creation to publishing and then promoting your uh, your content. So that's sort of what we do in a nutshell. Good deal. That is absolutely wonderful. And speaking of content, is it true that to be a content creator, do you have to have a passion for a passion for writing and creating new themes and articles and stories, or is that something that uh, anybody can develop a skill for? That's a great question. I think that you should have a bit of a not, not necessarily a passion, but an understanding of it for sure. Enough of an understanding to maybe outsource it to a company like ours, or if you want to hire your own in-house writer. But I don't think that I don't think that everybody needs to know how to do the nitty-gritty uh, bits and pieces of, of content marketing to have a good strategy. I think that you can put together teams of uh, of contractors and outsource that, but you should have a basic basic sort of understanding of how things work for sure how things work perfect yeah and the reason why I asked that I, I know that you guys have been uh, definitely successful in what you do as far as um, the different articles and the services that you offer but I, I wanted to kind of get an idea of like how your your interest in what your background was in writing like did you did you start, were you one of those kids or students that did a lot of writing and storytelling or is that something that you just kind of grown to to like over the years yeah, so I actually, that's a great, great question. I did my university degree in uh, law and human rights, oh, so wow. it's oh, yeah. not at all <laughs> anything to do with uh, with content marketing. That being said, it required a lot of essay writing, so I, I do like writing myself, and I know how to do it pretty well. But, uh, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it's like a big passion of mine. Yeah. What's a bigger passion of mine is, is business and finding opportunities to opportunities and niches to sort of grow and expand in, which is, uh, which is what I've done with Content Refined. Perfect. Sounds good. There's a lot of different components of marketing, but specifically, I guess in this instance, we're talking about content marketing when it comes to articles and SEO and content-driven uh, pieces of information that we're trying to you know get out there what do you think like because a lot of people don't even understand what seo marketing is they don't really understand how the the articles content affects the types of traffic and the type of awareness that they want to create so could you explain a little bit about how the you know content driven pieces and seo marketing can you explain a little bit about how that works and how effective that is yeah for sure so where we start at Content Refined is sort of the, the keyword research uh, side of things. So we have access to a bunch of really, really powerful off-the-shelf content marketing tools that allow us to that allow us access to the big data um, around keyword research. So that's where we start. So okay. we will essentially, uh, yeah, start with the keyword research, figure out what keywords we're going to go after based on 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 data. So what 
we like to look for is keywords that are searched quite a bit on a monthly basis. So we okay. look for anything that searched sort of over 500 times a month, and then that fall within like 30% competition score. So that's sort of our our like magic keyword research number. So once we've got the keyword, then we expand on that and create create the content, so create the article. And so what we do with that is we use a tool called Market Muse, and it will essentially allow us to input a, a keyword. It will allow us to analyze that keyword, and it will scrape the web on every other article possible on, on the Internet, and mm-hmm. it will basically give us the tools to beat the our, our competitors. So we will take that report, we'll create a piece of content that is much better than any other piece of content on the internet about that topic to create our piece of content. So that gives us a bit of a competitive advantage, and so that's really like the, the data that we use to create a really compelling piece of, uh, piece of content. And then we will publish it, and when we publish it, we basically touch on all of the um, sort of factors in SEO that will help that is that sound that process sounds like it is you know I, I know that it takes time for you guys to make sure that everything is perfectly crafted is there a specific type of uh, industry that you work within or a specific type of client could you tell us more about who you guys cater to or if if, if your service is available to yeah. anybody that's looking for content marketing yeah so so the short answer is is if you have a business or a website, we would love to work with you. And if you need more traffic to your website, we're, uh, we're, uh, we're an agency that you can definitely outsource this stuff to. But in terms of sort of our, our more ideal client, we have had a lot of success with people who need like bulk content. So people who have like affiliate websites that just need a massive amount of content on a consistent basis, those are the kind of types of clients that we like to work with and that we have like really great results with. But I'm wondering now that like I'm, I'm saying this out loud, I wonder if we have had such great success with these types of clients yeah. because we're just creating so much content that the, that the, uh, that the data is, um, is much like our, our sample size is much larger than other clients who don't need as much content. Um, so, so yeah, I wonder what uh, what what the driving force is behind that number. If it's if it's more because we're creating you know content, like yeah. three hundred thousand words of content for one for one client versus eight thousand words of content for another. Um, obviously, the the clients who were who were creating 300,000 words of content yeah. for are, are going to rank, you know? Exactly. Yeah, that, that, that's amazing that, you know, and, and I guess like in order to, and I know that we're, we're kind of going a little bit off on the side with this conversation, but like, as far as the rankings are concerned, a lot of people think that, okay, as long as you have the content that it would rank, but there's actually a, a different strategy. Like you, you definitely have to have like the, you know, certain keywords and it has to be properly formatted. Um, to be picked up in Absolutely. the different search engines. Okay. Absolutely, and and you know Google really has like changes their algorithms all the time, and if you aren't aware of what those algorithm changes are or what what like the new algorithm looks for, then you're gonna fall behind really really quickly on your content marketing strategy. That is, I, that's mind boggling. I would, yeah, I would pretty much just outsource everything to a, a company like Content Refined because that, that's, it's too much to keep up with. It is too much and you already have to manage your social media. So you may as well just outsource the content part, part of it to somebody who knows what they're well, doing. That's exactly it. I, I just, I think it's hilarious. Like I get on phone calls, like sales calls all the time with people who like, one of the first things they'll say is, oh, I've been doing SEO for 25 years. And I'm like, okay, so you're an SEO expert, then why aren't you doing it yourself, you know? Right. And, and, but further down the conversation, it's very evident, very, like, very quickly that, <laughs> no, they don't know everything about exactly. SEO. Exactly, yeah. And it's actually a full-time job. And, and, yeah, it really is a full-time job to, to do your content marketing strategy properly. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, okay. Well, so let let that is I'm still processing that because I uh, I know exactly what you're talking about as far as trying to keep up with everything, and I definitely think that's wonderful that you guys are able to be on top of that and and take care of those services 
uh, for people who need them. And speaking of taking care of services and what you guys have created, let's talk a bit about Content Refined. Okay, so you have this business that you have created. You guys are uh, growing. Things are happening. When did you know it was time for you to scale your business? Um, great question. So I, it is, I didn't really, it, there wasn't ever like really an aha moment where it was like, oh, it's time to scale. It just kind of happened yeah. organically. So the way it started was I actually got hired on by, by my business partner to uh, create a process around consistent, high quality content creation for his um, portfolio of websites. So I was originally like hired on as a contractor to, to figure out that process. Yeah. And so once I had sort of figured out that process uh, on like how how to do this on, on a consistent sort of automated process, we like I kind of had worked myself out of a job. And so I pitched it to him and I was like, hey, this, this is really, really working for your website. And like, it's clear, here's the data. Let's wrap this process up, refine it a little bit, and, and launch it as a service, a standalone service to, to your audience. Right. And so that's what we did, and that's how it sort of started. We get ball rolling with sort of some beta testers, um, and then it sort of organically grew from there. So uh, there was never a, a clear, clearly defined aha moment where it was time to scale. It just happened. Yeah, and it's been uh, and yeah, it's been definitely a whirlwind. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, but it's going really well, and it's been scaling continuously, um, and we've had really, really great times in the business, and we've had not so great times in the business, yeah. and, uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of it. We're sort of, sort of recovering from a bit of a, a dip in our business, but, uh, but it's going really well overall. Perfect, Madeline. Yeah, and, and speaking of the dip, I know that you guys also had a, a, a time period to where you had an exciting story to where you were able to kind of grow the business to $50,000 in reoccurring revenue and things were just kind of quickly happening for you guys. Give us some insight, like share, share with us that story. I thought that was just exciting that you guys were able to do that. Yeah. So, so within the first year of the business, it was really just me and my team of writers and my team of uh, publishers and my editor. So it was really just like a, a, a one one woman show. Yeah. And uh, so as as the business got bigger, like bigger and bigger, I've got more and more clients. I started to realize that my, like my time was getting so stretched um, that I wasn't really able to give the, the the quality of service that I wanted to. Um, so that's when I made my my first hire. So that would have been probably about 10 months after we launched the business. Oh, wow. um, I made my first hire, and so what we did was we dupl duplicated that team. So she became the, the a project manager. She hired her own team of writers. She hired her own team of editors and publishers. And so that's when our, like, team pod strategy sort of came to life. So I, I was there managing my own team, managing my own clients, and then my, my first hire was another project manager, and she was hired. She was managing her own team and her own clients. And so, basically, at a, at every point where we felt like we didn't have any more capacity to take on more clients, we would start recruiting to create another team pod. Oh, wow. um, and so, now at this point, we have about six six team pods that that handle their own subset of clients. Um, and so that's how we've organized the business. It's like siloed, um, if that makes sense. Oh man, that's fantastic. That is fantastic. That yeah, that that is definitely a recipe for success. Uh and speaking of which, give us what is your definition of success? What is that to you? Oh, definition of success. I think I have a bit of a I think I have a bit of a different view on this. Okay. Um just just especially lately because my life has changed drastically over the last year. So I think my personal definition of success right now is um, is freedom. So I I feel free right now to do what I love, but to also also take time to explore other avenues in my life. So for example, I just had a baby about nine months ago. I had my first child, and um, 
I was still able to keep up with the business and I didn't I was I didn't take that like that big hit that a lot of women who decide to have families yeah. and run a business or yeah, have families and careers, I didn't necessarily get hit that hard because I had control over what I wanted that to look like. So I when I got pregnant, I quickly put that into the into my business plan and I like worked my business around my life. You know, I don't yeah. think a lot of a lot of people have the freedom to do that um, in their lives and in their careers. And so, so for me, that's what that's my definition of success. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and congratulations on the new baby. I know that is an absolute bundle of joy. So that that's perfect. I love your, your explanation. And you said freedom, you know, which is, it, yep. it, yeah, to be able to do what you enjoy. That That's perfect. I love that. Yeah, and, and to have control over your, your life, I guess, you know, like not everyone is lucky like that, you know, and, and I think that especially women who – like, unfortunately, women who want to start a family are really put at a disadvantage in their careers and yeah. in their lives sometimes. And I I feel like I've been really lucky to sort of get a, be able to get around that and work my business around around a family life. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you there. All right, perfect. So, <laughs> yep. So, and and let's, let's talk about the lessons that you have learned as an entrepreneur. What is one of the greatest lessons you've learned? Oh, <laughs> just one right <laughs> probably tons of them yeah have thick skin for sure not everyone on the internet is going to be nice to you oh, wow. um, <laughs> right and uh yeah i think it's you you figure out how to have thick skin pretty quickly and if you if you don't you're gonna have your feelings hurt a lot <laughs> exactly yeah you know what that yeah. actually yeah yeah go ahead i'm sorry um, no, no worries. So there's that one, but also, oh, what other lesson have I learned? Best, like, actual lesson I've learned um, is to hire people who know more than you about stuff. Oh, wow. So don't be, don't be intimidated by how smart other people are. So, like, the worst thing that you can do for your business is to to want to be the smartest person in your organization. Right. If you hire down, then that's what you're going to, that's what your business is going to be. It's not going to, it's not going to grow. It's not going to, like you will create a ceiling in your organization if you don't hire people who know more than you about, about certain things. So for example, I, wanted to I wanted to do paid advertising so I like like Facebook ad Google ads so I tried to figure it out myself and that was like my yeah. biggest issue <laughs> right. uh, is, is that is that I didn't know anything about this stuff so I tried it I failed I tried it again I failed and then I was like you know what I need to hire somebody who actually exactly. knows something about this like this is not my area of strength Let's hire a professional who knows something about this. So, so that's what I did. And same with like some of my project managers. Like they bring different skills to the team that I just don't have. And if I were always searching for for people who who like didn't know as much as I did, yeah. then I would have never been able to grow this business to where it is today. Oh yeah, I so totally hire agree. Hire up. Hire up. Hire up. Yep. That is definitely some good advice. And let's, uh, I know you just let us know, you, well, you gave us a, defini- a definition, goodness, of success, but what do you enjoy most about entrepreneurship? I love not, I love basically, I love basically being able to do whatever I want. Like, I I have an idea, I can do it. It's, I'm not confined by a, a like job title or job description. Like I'm not going to get in trouble for for yeah, yeah. thinking outside of the box and like trying new things and and you know having creative ideas around different campaigns. Like I I love having yeah the freedom to to be creative and not stick to sort of stringent guidelines. Yeah, no that that totally makes a difference, especially when you're able to kind of be your own boss. 
and speaking of which, when you're on, when you are in a position, <laughs> when you're in a position to be your own boss, you have to, uh, not only to make sure that things run smoothly, but you also have to go in and take care of, uh, things that arise if there's any issues. So when it comes to adversity, what keeps you going? How do you, how do you overcome that? Um, yeah, so that's tough. That's a tough one. It's always a hard pill to swallow, you know, like when yeah. things aren't going well or when, when people aren't happy, it, it never feels good. So what my, what my go-to strategy is, is to, like, I'm a, I'm a very reactive person and I've learned from many mistakes of being overreactive and, and replying to emails too quickly is that if something if something gets to me a little bit more than it should, I give it 24 hours before I respond so that I have a chance to sort oh, wow. of mull it over, extract yeah. the emotion out of it, and then look at it with a fresh pair of eyes the next day. And then that will, that usually allows me to look at it more objectively and, um, yeah, and, and remove the overly emotional stuff from any decisions that I make. That is, that's gold. <laughs> that is gold. Give it to <laughs> 24 hours. Please don't be <laughs> react off of, uh, don't be reactive. Exactly. I've, I've, sent some, I've sent some brutal emails because <laughs> I'm angry and like, <laughs> I, and when I look back on them, I'm like, what kind, what kind <laughs> of monster wrote that? Exactly. Like, come on. Um, and that's not how I want to conduct myself ever, but especially in business. Well, yeah, no, ever, you know, like, you don't want to be that, like, emotional psychos, <laughs> psychotic exactly. business who, who responds to emails in, like, a, in a not-so-nice way. So, yeah, just, just mull it over, take, take time, um, think about it objectively, sticking up that skin, and uh, come, come back at it the next day with a fresh pair of eyes. Yeah, I love that. I think we've all been there, so... I totally understand where you're coming from. And before we wrap up, uh, Marilyn, I want you to, I, I know there's some free giveaways that you have and uh, also some additional information you want to share as far as your upcoming promotions and things like that for the viewers, for the listeners. Go ahead and share that and then we'll wrap up with a uh, one last question and close out. Yeah, sounds great. So um, if anybody is interested in content refined, we can offer 20% off of month one for any podcast listeners. Um, and I've got, uh, I'll, I'll send you those links um, so that you can put it in the show notes with the, uh, with the coupon code that will essentially allow you to, uh, to redeem that on checkout. And then uh, for those of you who are doing their own content creation, who might not have the budget to outsource this stuff yet, I have some really helpful like uh, standard operating procedures, and uh, and so those are article writing guides that will help you help you create really great content, um, and so that will also be available in the show notes um, with a little down code, uh, download code. Excellent. All right, guys, you heard it, and I will definitely be sure to include that information once this podcast is up and available. So before we close, Madeline, please offer us some advice, what, what would you, what advice would you give to an aspiring entrepreneur or somebody who wants to launch a product or a service or to just kind of break free from the rut of the everyday nine to five? So my best piece of advice, and this is like, this is going to sound like a bit of a, a, a no brainer, but I think <laughs> that people's biggest mistake in, in wanting to start their own business or launch their own product um, is that they don't necessarily re- like they see the freedom aspect of it but they don't necessarily see the hard work that goes behind it oh, wow. um, and let me tell you my first year in business I was pulling like 18 hour days and it is it is not easy work and it is always a grind and um, there's a beautiful prize at the end but don't forget about that hard work and without it, you, you're not going to get there. So work hard. <laughs> work hard. Saying. Yeah, I'll, okay, perfect. No, I, we, we definitely need to make sure we, we let people know it is a grind and you definitely have to work hard. Excellent. This has been great, Madeline. We appreciate you being such a great guest. And uh, before we leave, let us know where we can find you online, more information about Content Refined and any other additional information. I always like to ask if you have a newsletter that uh, the listeners can subscribe to, make sure that you 
note that information as well. Yeah, absolutely. So you can um, you can find me at contentrefine.com. You can always uh, email me directly at uh, Maddie, so M A D D I E at contentrefine.com. And uh, and yeah, that's where you can find out more. You can take a read on our awesome blog. And uh, and yeah, and if you'd like to subscribe to our newsletters, you can uh, you can opt in there. Excellent. Sounds good. Well, thanks so much for being a wonderful guest, and we look forward to hearing back from you soon. You have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with us here on SOB. We hope this episode has been resourceful. If you'd like to check out the latest articles or follow Keetra's website updates, just log on to Keetra.com or follow her on Twitter at K-E-E-T-R-I-A.